Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. If you're interested in doing the problems from 5th edition as well, this, this as I just showed you is 5th uh, 6th edition. I don't have the 5th edition with me, I left it in the other room, but if you're interested in solving the problems that appeared in the 5th editions, 5th uh, edition, you will, you will find that we have solved every single problem that appeared in the, in the last edition, the 5th edition, and you will find the solutions to those, these 5, you will find a solution to those from day 1 through 100. Just type in T's day 1 and the series ends at day 80. There are no videos from 81 through 100. We begin a new series from 101 for the 6th edition. Today is our lesson number 142. We are on page number 80 time and we are going to do the practice problems. The very first one that you see there, they are being asked to find the mean, the median and the mode of the given data set. It says find the mean, the mode and the median of the given data set of the given data set. It goes something like this. We have 0, 1, 1, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 9. Let's first find the mean. Let's see what we can do here. Let's first find the mean. Stay with me in this story. To find the mean, we have to first find the sum and then divide by however many we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There looks like there are 9 of them. What's the sum? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. Let's, let's, let's do it the easy way. I see a 1 and a 9, that's a 10. I see another 1 and a 9, that's a 20. Uh, that's a 20. I see around the 10, that's 30, that's 30, and that leaves us with these two. There you go, we're done. One more time. This 1 and a 9 makes a, make a 10. This 1 and this 9 make another 10, that's 20. 4 and a 6 makes another, third, another 10, that's 30. And then 15, that's 45. 45 over 9, 45 over 9, 9 5 is 45, so the average is 5. What's the, what's the median? What's the median? Well, median is very straightforward. Median is the middle number after the numbers have been arranged either in the ascending order or descending order. It doesn't have to be one or the other. As long as they are arranged in the order, then whatever value falls in the middle, that's your, me that's your median. Here we have nine, nine numbers here, nine observations. So the median is going to be the fifth one. We have four on this side, one, two, three, four, zero, one, one, four, and four on this side. 7, 8, 9, 9, the one that sits in the middle is 6, that's your median, median is 6, because, because there are 4 numbers to the, to the right of 6 and there are 4 numbers to the left of 6, that's your median. What about the mode? What's the mode? What does mode mean? Mode means most, fre most frequently appearing number. Well here it turns out, here it turns out that we have two ones. One, one appears twice, but we also have two nines. So here we cannot talk about mode, here we have to talk about modes. This, 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 this data set is bimodal. This data set, this data set is bimodal. It has two modes, namely one and nine. It has two modes. One cannot talk about what is the mode of this data set, what are the modes. It has two of them. Let's move on to number two. In number two, on page number 89, we are given a distribution. Which of the following describes the distribution portrayed in the graph? 
it is very very important it is vital it is crucial it is essential it is absolutely imperative that you watch these videos in the proper sequence don't go all over the world uh, like a mad person watch in sequence and if you have been watching the videos in sequence if you watch day 138 139 40 41 we learn how to recognize the shape of the distribution that you see there and we learn what a distribution actually means and what we mean by a frequency distribution what we have there in problem number two uh, what is displayed there is a frequency distribution and it looks something like this in problem number two what we have is something like this a frequency distribution as we, have, as we know already now we have done it many many times frequency distribution is so cold because on the y-axis we have the frequencies it tells us how often a given value appears in the data set and on the x-axis we have the values here we have no 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 data set uh, we have no numbers there we just have the shape actually we do have numbers there they do give you a number okay? we're not going to put it on the blackboard it looks something like this as you can see the peak this is the mode this is the mode this whatever this value is whatever this value is uh, let's call it x if some if, the, if it was if it was a question like this in the exam if they give you some shape like this and they ask you what is the mode of this distribution whatever this value is this is the mode this is this is this is the mode because this value this x value whatever it is if x happens to be let's say 7 then in this distribution 7 appears most often how do we know that because that's the peak that's that's how often it appears this if it says 13 here then it would mean that in this data set 7 appears 13 times for example if you were to make a list another example, for example let's say you have 40 students in the class or 30 students in the class and you give them a quiz and the quiz was made up of 20 points 20 points was the most maximum that somebody could have gotten and you have a record of everybody's score if you have a record of everybody's score of the, of the class of 30 students it turns out 13 out of those 30 students scored 7 out of 20 or if you like 7 out of 10 if you want to be generous that's how often 7 appeared most people, well not most people, we can't say most people but uh, the 7 appears most often therefore it's the mode and that's the peak but the point here is not peak none of this was the point here the point here is P is to the right peak is not centered usually in a normal distribution it has a shape like this it is right in the middle it's symmetric that is not the case here that is not the case here the peak is to the right peak which is same as saying mode mode is to the is peak is to the right this distribution seems to be distorted distorted to left it's distorted here it's not it doesn't have a nice shape that it's supposed to have it's distorted to the left on the left hand side it's distorted but all the word for distorted is all the word for distorted is skewed skewed simply means distorted that's all it is what was the question asking which of the following this which of the following best describes the distribution portrayed in the graph and the answer is this graph this distribution is skewed to the left is skewed to the left it is something like this we would say is skewed to the right maybe you have something like this well this this thing is skewed to the right because the peak is to the right peak is not somewhere in the center it's not it's not symmetric it's this peak is to the right oh sorry this one is this one is yes the peak is not sorry the peak is, is to the left here the peak is, is to the left and therefore it is, is said to be a skewed right this one is skewed to the left that's the problem number three which happens to be the last problem Just look for where the distortion is. Is it distorted to the right or to the left? And that's what it is. Just distor distorted is just another word for skewed. 
or if you like, skewed is another word for distorted. The noun would be skewness or distortion. Look for the distortion. Where is where is the distortion? Where is the skewness? In number three, in number three, we are given a graph with some values. Again, we're not going to put the values on the blackboard. You're not interested in that. Here we have some x x variable. Here we have some y variable, and and. And when you plot the, the, the ordered pairs of x and y, it looks something like this. Something like this. And what do we do? Well, we, we fit a train. A train is fit and it would look something like this. We want to minimize the distance of this point, vertical distance to this line. We want to minimize them. And the way we minimize this distance here for each of these points is by putting it as, 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 as in the center as possible so that this distance from here to here are minimized. These are the errors. This, this is what the actual value is. This is what the predicted value is going to be. This one is right there. This one is right there. The distance is very little. This one is right here. This one is right here. But anyway, this is the trend line. This is called, this is called the trend line. The question is, what sort of trend do we see? Trend with a D question is what sort of trend do we see? The answer is the trend here is decreasing. Trend that we observe here is trend is decreasing. Well what does it mean? Trend is decreasing is another way of saying that the slope of the line is negative. This line has a negative slope. The question again is, what does it mean when we say slope is negative? Slope is negative is another way of saying that as the value of x goes up, y goes down. Or, or if you like, or if you like, as the value of x goes down, y goes up. Or if you like, the two variables, the two variables, move in the opposite directions. They move in the opposite direction. Or if you like, as one goes up, the other goes down. Or if you like, they, well we already said it, they move in the opposite direction. I wrote it someplace. Oh, we didn't write it. They move in the opposite direction. You see, what we need to understand here, what we need to understand here is that statistics, because that's what it is, this is, this is a study of statistics. Statistics is like a language. It's like any other language. It's a language. It's a lingo. And just like any other language, we can say, we can convey the same concept in many different ways. For example, for example, you might say, oh, my dear uncle passed away. My uncle is deceased. He died. He, he has gone to meet the maker. Sometimes, sometimes people say that. Uh, he, is, uh, he is no longer, he is no longer, he is no longer. That's it. He has passed away. He is deceased. Or if you are very sentimental, uh, to your uncle, uh, towards your uncle, you might even say he has kicked the bucket. That geezer finally kicked the bucket. Very sentimental, as I said. But the point here is that all of these statements are conveying the same concept. The concept is the guy is a dead as a dodo. That's all you're trying to say. The guy is now dead as a dodo. You see, another way of saying the same thing. That's that's the same idea, same concept, same logic, same rationale applies to the language of statistics. What we have, all of these things that I just put in the blackboard, they are all saying the same thing, but in different ways. What we see here, we can say that the train is decreasing. That's, another, that's one way of saying it, train is decreasing. Another way of saying is that the slope of this line is negative. This is a neg or you could have said this is a negatively sloped line. It is a negatively sloped line. It is a negative, or you can say x, x goes up, y goes down. That x goes up, y goes down, you see? Look. Right here, 
right here there is some value of x this is the value of x right here as we move from point A to say point B here so at point B the value of x here is now like this the value of x has gone up from from here this is how x much x value of x here was this this much here as the value of x goes up what happens to the value of y the value of y goes down the y here was this much now the value of y y has gone down y has gone down by this much x has gone up by that much a value of x has gone up from here to here as the value of x goes up the y goes down as x goes up, y goes down. Or if you like, as x goes down, instead of going from A to B, we could have gone from B to A. If we do our journey from B to A, if, if we take our journey from B to A, then going from moving from B point B from point B to point A. At point B the value of x is this, as point A the value of x is this. The value of x has gone down, moving from point B to point A, the value of x has gone down, but moving from point A to point B, at point B the value of y was then, now the value of y is this, the value of y has gone up. So, as x goes up, y goes down, or if you like, as x goes down, y goes up. All of this thing is saying the same thing. Or you can simply say that two variables are moving in the opposite direction. As one goes up, the other one goes down. They are moving in the opposite direction. Alright, here I had already put down, I knew I had put it down, the two variable move in the opposite direction. This is, this is the repeat. That was it. That was the answer to it. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.